Good morning, church family. Happy Lord's Day. And uh, it is always good to be here uh, worshiping, uh, singing, and glorifying our Lord with you together here this morning. Um, thank you so much, Brother Pete, for the songs that uh, were chosen this morning for our worship, uh, which uh, deals with thankfulness. Uh, this morning, uh, I prepared a short lesson, short lesson, for um, with regards to thankfulness. And um, um, First Thessalonians 5.18 said, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Before we begin the lesson, let's uh, go to our Father in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you, to praise you, and to hear a portion of your word this morning. We thank you, dear God, for your provisions and your providence in our lives and uh, your guidance to each and every one of us, especially to this church that you establish. We ask, dear God, that we, as we go through the lesson this morning, may we open our hearts and our mind and um, have the wisdom and understanding for the things that we are about to talk about this morning. And please guide your servant so that I could be your instrument to share your words this morning. We love you, Lord, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, thankfulness. Thankfulness. When we think about thankfulness, we right away think, think about thanksgiving. And uh, this morning I chose uh, the topic thankfulness. Actually, I call it a, a call for thankfulness. Hashtag thankfulness which is uh, the modern way to say it now, uh, because we have a lot of things to be thankful about. In the midst of all these calamities, all the situation that we are in right now, still God is faithful and God is good because he protects us, he provides for us, and his promises are true. We have too much more to go before Thanksgiving 2021. But when we think about and talk about the goodness of our God, we cannot just assign a date and a day in order for us to praise Him and give thanks to our Lord and our God. For every moment of our day should always be a Thanksgiving. So don't expect a turkey dinner today when you go home because it's not the Thanksgiving day that we are preparing today. But as I've said, every moment of our day should always be a Thanksgiving. David, in the book of Psalms, knows how to thank God. He prays and worships God for his steadfast love for mankind. He said, let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. Question. When was the last time you thanked the Lord? As you open your eyes in the morning, do you say thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning? And throughout the day, do you utter the words, thank you, Lord, for all the things that are going on around us? Before every meal or after every meal, do we give thanks? And before going to sleep and to rest our tired and aching body of the day's work, do you still give thanks to the Almighty One? If your answer to those simple questions is yes, then you're doing well. Because giving thanks to the Lord is a command. And it is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you and for me. I have a little note here. As we go further 
in our lesson this morning about the call for thankfulness. We will see that thankfulness and gratitude goes hand in hand. Thankfulness is the first step in appreciating the good things that are happening to us. And to give it a deeper meaning, it is gratitude. Gratitude is the expression of our thankfulness. So bear with me, and I know that the Lord will help us understand on how these two words will relate to each other. So again, thankfulness is a feeling of, great, of gratitude of the good things that we experience, while gratitude is the manifestation or the product of our thankfulness. So again, it goes. The word thanksgiving is first used in the Bible in the book of Leviticus, chapter 7, specifically on verses 11 to 15. Uh, it says, And this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offering that one may offer to the Lord. If he offers it for thanksgiving, then... He shall offer with the thanksgiving of sacrifice. That's just a part of the portion of Leviticus 7. Thankfulness is to show oneself grateful. To be thankful. To be thanks. To give thanks. It is the acknowledging and confessing with gladness the benefits and mercies which God bestows either upon us or to others. Being thankful is a choice and the heart should always be in the right place. Again, Leviticus 22 Verse 9 or 29. It's 929. Okay. Uh, let's check that. I just want to make sure. Uh, Leviticus 22, 29. If you have your Bible, it's my, I have my Bible here. Sometimes we make mistakes on clerical things. Leviticus 22, 29. Okay, okay, it's 29, Leviticus 22, verse 29, it says, When you sacrifice a thank offering to the Lord, sacrifice it in such a way that it will be accepted on your own behalf. In other words, when you offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord, offer it of your own free will. The Apostle Paul preached about the condition of the heart when giving thanks to God by means of our giving back to God what He has prospered us. And this could be your material wealth, your time, your talent, and your whole being. 2 Corinthians 9.7, as Brother Todd read it a while ago, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart and to give not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. We said a while ago that thanksgiving or thankfulness and gratitude goes hand in hand. According to Jonathan Edwards, a great American preacher and a theologian, there are two kinds of gratitude. First, the natural gratitude, as its name implies, flows out of us effortlessly. When good things happen to us, it could be something big like receiving an inheritance or getting a high-paying job. You could easily say, thank you, thank you, because that's there. And it is as small as letting you go ahead of them in a checkout lane. Or, or just like this morning, uh, excuse me, my wife. My wife woke up and he asked me, 
What day is it? It says, Sunday. Oh, thank God, it's Sunday. I thought it was Monday. Things like that. Things like that. Simple things like that. But, there are things, but these things are not really very hard and difficult. There's not difficult about it. A kind of thankfulness of blessings received. Another example is life, health, home, family, freedom, a warm bed at night, a cold drink on a hot summer day, etc. Things like this. It is an appreciation of all the good gifts that life gives us. It is when we love God and give thanks to Him because He gives us all our needs. In which, you know, in which a non-convert has also has this capacity. A non-believing friend or a neighbor welcomes the good things that represent that resents. Ah, excuse me. An unbelieving friend or a neighbor. An unconverted neighbor welcomes the good things, but resents the unfavorable. When in convenience, inappropriate, or unsuitable circumstances enter their lives, bitterness, anger, hopelessness takes control of them. They lose their patience in waiting for their prayers to be answered. And relying on their own self and understanding, trust, trust in the Lord is compromised until totally broken. That's natural gratitude, an easy thing to say, an easy thing to do. The second gratitude that Mr. Edward is talking about is gracious. At its gratitude. It's the gratitude we, we express for God for His goodness, even when we are surrounded by difficult circumstances. Gracious gratitude can be more challenging. It's rejoicing in God's character and love for us when the health report is negative, when the bills outweigh the checkbook, or a family member dies unexpectedly. Gracious gratitude is the thankfulness that is born of grace. A true, genuine love for God. Giving thanks to God for who He is, His goodness, His love, His power. It is the protective care of God in which you can find your trust in the divine providence to be the source of your comfort. Psalm 103 verses 1 to 5, David says, Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with the love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed. Like the eagles. It remind me of our song, Never Grow Old. I can truly say that people who are gracious and have a gratitude in their heart always look young. That's why most Christians look young and beautiful because they have the thankfulness in their heart. They never grow old. Their strength is renewed day by day. Ephesians chapter 5.20 says, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Purposeful, perpetual thanks to God is absolutely essential to
to Christian character. We should be enthusiastic, determined, and committed in our thankfulness. As children of God, we have to give thanks constantly, always giving thanks, total thanksgiving, constant thanksgiving. For in gratitude or being ungrateful is one of the marks of unbelief. Paul puts it on the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 21. He said, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But they became futile. In futile in their thinking and darkened in their foolish hearts. You see, brothers and sisters, if we don't give thanks and constantly take and constantly take God for granted, we become futile or pointless in our thinking. We lose our purpose in life and we will be easily entangled with the sins of this world. Flashback in the book of Exodus chapter 16. Remember that Moses led the Israelites from the bondage of slavery in Egypt. And while in the desert, they grumbled against Moses and Aaron, saying that they have a better life in Egypt. Instead of being thankful or being free from the bondage of being slaves, they still have the guts to complain. But, you know, God is still faithful. He sent them manna from heaven in the morning and still grumbles. They sent, God they sent them quails for their meat at nighttime. But still they grumbled. Nevertheless, God continued to guide them and keep them safe in the desert by providing them a cloud by day to protect them and a pillar of fire by night. So that there could be no darkness. And yet, and yet, they disobeyed that, that was instructed to them. And reading the text of Exodus 16, I didn't see the words, thank you, Lord, for the miracle in the desert. Why? Because they think they deserve more. They forgot about God who already promised them a land that they could call their own. They were caught up with their present situation, blinded by their ungrateful heart. So instead of being thankful, they grumbled. Grumbled this groaning, whining. And I think you know about this kind of grumble. When you said... Sometimes, no word for that, just, you know. I put that here because sometimes when my wife serves me food, and I seem not to really like much, as soon as the, table, the, the serving tray hits the table, I sometimes say, and that's it. That's it. No word said. And then you'll find out she'll fix the bed. Hot fix. <laughs> Instead of being giving thanks to my wife and to the food that was served, right? my wife took time preparing it. She said, oh, not, that's not good, brother. That's not good. So, seriously, let's uh, review again on the book of Luke, chapter 17. Verses 11 to 19, there are 10 lepers that Jesus healed. As Jesus was going to the village, 10 men who had leprosy met him and cried out for healing. Jesus, master, they said, have pity on us. And Jesus told them to go and show themselves to the priest. They obeyed and on their way, they noticed they were cleansed. On verse 15 and 16, it says, One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. 
said, thank you, thank you, Jesus. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And guess what? He's a Samaritan. From all the ads, he's a Samaritan. And Jesus asked him, well, I thought they were 10 of you. Where are the other nine? Out of the 10, only one came back and said, thank you. And the others out there enjoying the blessing, they already forgot who blessed them for healing. Sometimes we tend to be like that. If I am unthankful, then I am suggesting that I deserve more than what I have. That's pride. That's pride. A reference from our, the book that we studied before, uh, The Renewing of Our Spiritual Life by Audrey Johnson, we recall Allowing yourself not to thank God is a symptom of spiritual Alzheimer. In his book, he mentioned that when you become self-centered and start believing to believe in yourself because of what you have accomplished, you will lose sight of God's blessing and forget your present dependence upon him. Then there will be poor judgment which will follow Forgetfulness. Now, a grateful heart is actually one of the indi indications of a work of grace. Because a grateful heart recognizes what, that without the love of God, we are doomed to eternity. Ephesians chapter 2 Verses 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. Just give thanks. Thankfulness gives us focus to God in giving Him praise. It gives us joy just remembering the blessings we receive from Him. It protects us from pride, from sin, and from ourselves. Thankfulness leads to humility, for we recognize our dependence on the mercy and grace of God. And when these two characters are in us, we can pursue wisdom, for which God gives generously for those who ask for it. Why wisdom? The wisdom you will need to understand the will of God in your situation. Good or bad, you need to pray for wisdom so that you'll find a reason to give thanks. And James, first, uh, first chapter, verse 5, it says, If any one of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously without finding fault, and it will be given to you. That's a promise. Now, the context or the condition and the setting of the frame of preference of being thankful is in here. In everything, give thanks. Said, in everything, give thanks. In everything means even when things go wrong, give thanks. In the midst of your situation, give thanks. Daniel, when he learned the decree was signed for the, they will execute for those who, who pray for any God or to any humans except to King Darius of Persia. Daniel 6.10 says, now when Daniel learned that the decree has been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem, three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Nothing stopped Daniel in praising and thanking God, in spite of he know that he will be executed. Thankfulness is a trust. 
Thankfulness is trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Thankfulness motivates obedience to God's will. Job, righteous man in the eyes of God, from being prosperous to a pitiful individual, for he lost everything except for his wife. But in the midst of his suffering and trial, he was able to worship and glorify God. He got questions, but he understood and knew that God gives and God takes away. Well, his wife said to him, are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die, she said. Good thing she's not my wife. And she said, Judd replied, you are talking like a foolish woman, she said. Shall we accept good things from God and not trouble? Job had kept his integrity and God restored him. In the past two years, COVID has greatly affected people in all walks of life. People suffered from loss of loved ones, isolation, anxiety, depression, confusion. But sadly, most of, especially churches of Christ all over the world suffered and still suffering because of fear and confusion. Do you know what? In the midst of all of this chaos, the true children of God will endure. We are still far from over, but we have peace. We have hope. We have comfort. He said, in everything, give thanks to the Father in heaven, for this is the will of God in you through Christ Jesus. For all kinds of suffering, Give thanks and rejoice because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character and a character hope. And hope will not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who he has given to us. Romans 5, 3 to 5. Are you mourning over a profound loss? such as the death of a loved one. Mourning, although painful, can help us align our hearts with the heart of God. Are you mourning over your sins or mistakes? Give thanks to God, for you will be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. Are you struggling with temptation? To any kinds of temptation, give thanks. For no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way to escape that you may be able to endure it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Are you anxious about anything? The Bible says, don't be anxious in anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present your request to God and the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6. Are we facing hard times? Give thanks and do not fear, for God will strengthen you. Isaiah 41.10 says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. In everything, give thanks. For we know, people of God, we know and we should know 
that for all things, I repeat, all things under the sun and above it, all things work together for good for those who love God and for those who are called to his purpose. Romans 8.28. You say you love God? Are you living for his purpose? Then you will know these things. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. We are the salt of the earth. Be thankful and be glad so that we won't lose our saltiness and lose our purpose of what God has planned for us. He said, you are the light of the world. You, we, be thankful and rejoice, praising his name and let your light and let the light in you shine. If we don't persevere as Christians and do what we are commanded to do, nothing will be left in this world but darkness. And darkness is scary. So here's the silver lining. That's why I thank God that here at East Foothill, Church of Christ, I trust and believe that we are doing our best in keeping our light shining, encouraging and lifting one another. Now I invite you to count our blessings. Let's count our blessings, just a few. Thanks, number one. I thank God for sending Jesus Christ who have redeemed us. And I thank God for his words to the Bible that teaches us how to live this world with his standard and how to keep them. We have brothers and sisters here at the church who are willing and serving and working in order for the church to function and to do God's work. We have people that surround us that we can see that God is working through them to see his good work that blesses us and encourages us. We have visitors coming every Sunday to join us in our worship. We have baptisms, which is very encouraging. We added so many, so, so, too many souls in our church since this pandemic happened. We continue to learn and to grow together in spite of the hurdles we have in this pandemic. Men's Bible class is on their third book. Since this thing happened, women's Bible class is still going strong, edifying and encouraging one another. We have leaders who are working hard in making sure that our fellowship is intact. Our goal, we have goals in getting a new preacher is underway. We have fellowship. We are not down. We just slow down a little bit. And I believe that, that through the grace of God, we will be strong again. Well, if I continue counting our blessings, that we will go to an overtime. But I think we already did. But, you know, those are simple things. Let us always focus our mind on Jesus our great Redeemer, and always giving thanks to God for all the things that he has done in our lives and to the lives of others. And don't forget our takeaway this morning. Always being thankful in everything. Not just being thankful at our present situation, but always giving thanks from our past and from our and to our, for our future. Because... We know who holds tomorrow. That's a song. Now, if you are here today and heard this good news, won't you accept God's invitation for Jesus as your Lord and your Savior? Again, I invite you to come and see what the Lord, what the good Lord is offering you. Repent from your wrongdoings and start a brand new life and be baptized in the fellowship of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you have any prayers, requests, please let us know so that we could all pray for it together. Thank you for your kind attention and to God be all the glory 
as we stand and sing our invitation song.